Hello there and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time on the channel, we went over social development in childhood. Today, we're going to expand our understanding on the topic as we look at cognitive development in childhood with Unit 6, Topic 3 of AP Psychology. When talking about cognitive development, remember we are talking about mental activities that are associated with thinking, communicating, remembering, and knowing. Psychologists such as Jean Piaget studied cognitive development in children to better understand how consciousness grew. When looking at cognitive development, Piaget believed that the brain developed in schema. Remember from our past unit, schemas are a way of thinking, organizing information. When we come across new information that does not fit into our schemas, Piaget believed one of two things would occur. The first option would be assimilation. This is when new information would be put into an existing schema. The second option would be accommodation. This is when an old schema would be adjusted to incorporate the new information. For example, if a child has a schema for a fish, they might call all animals that are underwater a fish. That would be assimilation. But as a child grows and develops, they understand that not all animals underwater are fish, and the schema needs to be modified to become less broad. One way in which we can look at cognitive development is through experiences. Children learn by interacting with the world around them. When children are under the age of four, they have a hard time being able to see the world from any other point of view besides their own. They've yet to develop the ability to see the world through another person's eye. When children cannot see other perspectives and points of view, they are egocentric. However, around the age of four, this is when things start to change. This is known as the theory of the mind. It's a cognitive development that occurs around age four, which allows children to understand thoughts and intentions and perceptions of others. Going back to PJ, we can see four stages of cognitive development. The first stage is the sensory motor stage, which starts at birth and goes to around two years old. During this stage, children start to be able to use their hands and to be able to move on their own. They also start to develop object permanence. This is when a child understands that an item and people exist even when you can't see them or hear them. From there, children go into the pre-operational stage, which normally lasts until a child is about six or seven years old. This is when children learn to use language, but still struggle with important concepts, such as conservation. This is the idea that certain properties, such as volume and mass, remain the same, even if they're moved from one container to another. During this stage, children start off as egocentric, but eventually to form the theory of a mind, which is when they gain the ability to understand others' perspectives and feelings. Children also during this stage start to develop a symbolic thought which is when different concepts can have a deeper meaning, such as objects having meaning or letters creating words. Now around seven years old, children entered the concrete operational stage. In this stage, Piaget believed children would start to think logically. Here, children would be able to start to fully understand conservation and start to understand more complex topics such as mathematics. During this stage, children will also understand the concept of reversibility, which is a mental operation where children can reverse a sequence of events, such as understanding that if I pour a milk into another glass, I can pour it back and it'll remain the same. Or if I add two plus two together, it equals four. And if I subtract two, it'll go back to two. Children during this stage will also be able to classify different objects. For example, by moving shapes into groups based on their colors or the shape. They can also understand seriation, which is when an individual can put items into a specific order or sequence. Lastly, Piaget believed that around the age of 12, people expand their knowledge base and begin to be able to understand abstract concepts. This is the formal operational stage stage, which lasts for the rest of your life. Individuals can now think about hypothetical situations or questions and use logic to break them down. They also are better at understanding consequences and moral reasoning. Now, it wasn't just Piaget who studied cognitive development in childhood. We can also look at the work of Vygotsky as well. Vygotsky believed that cognitive development occurs through social interaction. Vygotsky believed that learning happens in the zone of proximal development, which is what children can learn and accomplish with the help from an outside person. Vygotsky believed that one of the ways in which adults could help support children in their learning was with scaffolding. This is when an individual provides support and guides the child to an understanding. It's important to note that scaffolding does not mean you give the answer to the child. You merely provide support for them to reach the answer on their own. To better understand Vygotsky's ideas, we can look at this simple model. In the center is what the child can do without any outside assistance. Then the ring outside the center circle is for concepts or items that the child can learn with the help of scaffolding. This is known as the zone of proximal development. The last ring, which is just outside the zone of proximal development is what the child cannot learn at this current time. In order for children to learn efficiently and effectively, you want to have them learn concepts that are not just in the center, but are also not too far outside the circle. Essentially, it is important to make sure you are not trying to have a child learn extremely difficult concepts too early. If a concept is too far outside of the zone of proximal development, the child will get frustrated and they might not be able to learn the concept and may develop learned helplessness or begin to feel inferior. By understanding the work of Piaget and Vygotsky, we can better understand 
understand how children develop and learn. But now comes the time to practice what we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comment section down below. And of course, as always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and checking out my ultimate review packet. It's a great resource that covers everything you need to know about AP psychology. It'll definitely help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin and I'll see you next time online.